please tell us your name. My name is uh, Losan Tenzin, but unfortunately very few people know this. And everybody calls me, calls me Samdong Rinpoche. Mm -hmm. And Samdong is the uh, uh, name of the, the, all the uh, successive incarnations. And Rinpoche is just a, um, just a title. title. But when we came into uh, India as a refugee, we are registering in the uh, Foreigners Registration uh, Office, and at that time somebody told the uh, uh, the person who is written name, and they have said this is Samdong Rinpoche, and I put that name in that register, so it become my name. That has become <laughs> your name. Very good. I'm going to con continue this. His Holiness the Dalai Lama asked us to record your experiences so that we can share your memories with many generations of Tibetans, the Chinese, and the rest of the world. Your memories will help us to document the true history, culture, and beliefs of the Tibetan people. Do you give your permission in this project? <laughs> Welcome. Rinpoche La, perhaps we could begin uh, by your telling us um, how old you are now, and where were you born? I'm 75 years old, according to Tibetan uh, tradition, and uh, according to uh, Western tradition, I'm 74, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> and uh, I was born uh, in a very small village, which is called Nangduk, uh -huh. and uh, it is a part of uh, Jul district. It is a very... Uh, end of the uh, Tibetan territory and it begins the Chinese territory. But my, uh, my native place was under Chinese rule for a long time. And uh, so I born in that uh, remote place, which is now in the Yunnan province. And uh, at this moment, it is called Dechin Autonomous Prefecture. Yes. yes, I see. And what did your family do for a livelihood? My family was a poor farmer. We have a small piece of land, mm -hmm. and we also have uh, livestock, mm -hmm. about uh, 50 uh, yaks and uh, female yaks. I see. And uh, one of my uncle used to go after the uh, animals uh, on the on the mountain. Yeah. And uh, my father was a farmer who uh, uh, do uh, cultivation on the land, and. Uh, my place is uh, quite uh, low altitude. We do have uh, two crops in a year, sometimes mm -hmm. three crops in mm. a year. That allows for a lot of turnover. Yes, yes, yes lots I of turnover, see. yeah. Um, and it, you said your village was very small. About how many families were there? During my uh, lifetime, didn't my, I was there. There are only 12 uh, uh, houses. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now I was told there are about uh, 25 or 26 <laughs> houses. Yeah. Small growth. <laughs> yeah, small. Yeah. How many uh, people were in your family? I do not remember exactly. My father has uh, two wives, mm -hmm. and from the first wife, <coughs> we have two elder sisters, and uh, then uh, from my mother, there are uh, uh, seven children. And uh, I'm the alone survivor. All other, my younger uh, sisters and brothers are all past. My elders are wow. all past. You're the only surviving yes, member. Yes, only survivor member. Of the I'm children. On nine, nine uh, I see, I uh, see. sisters and brothers. Wow. <laughs> well, tell us what happened um, in terms of your early life. What are some of the most uh, memorable experiences that you can recall? I was very young, about uh, three and a half years old. Mm -hmm. uh, my uncle monk from the local monastery uh, used to visit our house quite often. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then uh, each time I insist that I should go with uh, that monk to the monastery. And uh, once I very much insisted and uh, I just, uh, uh, just uh, hold on that monk and uh, I refused to uh, let him go. <coughs> then uh, my father thought, uh, uh, let him take to the monastery and uh, the next day he can take me back. So then that, that day he took me to the monastery 
And when we reach to the monastery, the monastery do not allow to keep uh, small children in the yes. monastery campus. Mm -hmm. And my uncle monk has a very difficult time uh -huh. to seek the permission. Later on, he told me. Then anyhow, the uh, monastery authorities think it, uh, I should allow to remain there. The next day, my father came to take me back, but I refused to go back. So then, since then, I remained in that monastery uh, as a very small child, and I was looked after by that uh, uncle monk. And At then three yes, and a half. Yes. Uh -huh. Then uh, <clears throat> yeah, three and a half. Then I was uh, about uh, five years old. Uh, then I was told, being recognized as the fifth Sandong. Mm -hmm. So since then, then I was being uh, very well looked after. All mm. the facilities were I there. Um, for people who don't know about the Samdong, could you please explain what you mean when you say I was recognized as the fifth Samdong? During the seventh Dalai Lama, yes. uh, seventh Dalai Lama have sent an uh, abbot to uh, three monasteries of my place. Mm -hmm. They are one monastery, my own monastery is known as Gaden de Shilin. Yeah. And then there's another monastery about uh, 50 kilometers away that is called Dungopu Yan Chenling. And uh, then yet another monastery, which is a bit far away, about 100 kilometers far away, that is called uh, Tunduling. <coughs> and uh, this mon three monastery used to have one abbot. Mm -hmm. And that abbot is uh, uh, to be appointed by the Jepunlo Salin Monastery. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the the period of seventh Dalai Lama, a very good uh, practitioner monk whose name was uh, Papa Rabga was sent to uh, be abbot of the three monastery. Mm -hmm. He worked uh, abbot uh, of that monastery, uh, three monastery for about three, four years. Then he uh, uh, completed his tenure. And thereafter, he was requested to be remain in my monastery, Gadente Shilin. They don't have any Rinpoche at that time. And then he remained and he passed away uh, in my monastery. Mm -hmm. And then the second was uh, recognized as uh, the reincarnation of the Papa Rabga. Mm -hmm. And the second was born in a house which is known as Samdong Tsang. <coughs> that means yeah. in front of a bridge. Yes. Sam is a bridge. Don is just in front, mm -hmm. and that name is a family name. The Samdon, Samdon Sang, a family, and uh, the boy was born there. And then, at the small age, he says, "My monastery is somewhere else, and I must go there." And then he was recognized the second Samdon, mm -hmm. and uh, which was named as Tempe uh, Nima, uh, and then he was uh, again. Uh, uh, recognized the third uh, Tembe Jalsen and the fourth Sultan Jatso and then fifth me. That's, that comes the Samdung yeah, yes. reincarnations. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Thank you. That's very helpful to understand that okay. lineage. Okay. When, when you were recognized, were there any um, events that happened that confirmed that you were the fifth? That I don't know. I was recognized by uh, the uh, great teacher, uh, very famous teacher, Chavji Pavunka. Mm -hmm. Chavji Pavunka gave a, a description of the uh, village and the river and the, my house and all these are given. But we are two brothers yes. at that time. Uh -huh. And then the names of two brothers were sent back to Central Tibet, Lhasa, the Pavunka passed away. Mm -hmm. Then uh, choosing me, it done by Chabji Tijan Rinpoche, the junior tutor to His Holiness. Mm -hmm. And Chabji Tijan Rinpoche says, this is the reincarnation of the, uh, the fourth Samdong. Ah. So this is uh, how it comes. This mm -hmm. is how he did it. Yeah. Do you, what are your earliest memories of the monastery? Can, can you recollect? Earliest memory of monastery is uh, just to uh, memorize some of the ritual uh, texts yeah. and then go through a study of uh, a language and literature 
and uh, I lived there only up to 12 years old. Uh -huh. And uh, after 12 years old, I come to uh, Central Tibet to, right. to join my higher study in the yes. Dipo Monastery. Yes. So mm. I reached Dipo Monastery in the uh, 1951, late 1951, just after Chinese occupation. Yes. When I reached uh, Dipo Monastery, Tibet was already occupied by China. Were so, you very adept in your early studies, or did you have to work as hard as any student? Yes, I have to work very hard, but I have a great teacher at my young age. Uh, my teacher was uh, the chief disciple of the um, past Sandung, the oh. fourth Sandung. That his disciple was a great scholar, and uh, he has uh, um, he has. Uh, a very uh, unique method of teaching to children really? and uh, uh, he is very different from the traditional uh, very strict uh, uh, teachers. <laughs> he was very kind uh -huh. and uh, he know child psychology, uh, psychology uh -huh. and uh, he is very uh, uh, very uh, very talented to, to deal uh, with children. So therefore my basic education from the age of seven till the age of 12 was very, very sound. So that therefore I was able to do my things uh, in the higher study quite easily. You know, it would be very interesting to understand what, what did he understand about the psychology of children? You've, you've seen many monks since then yourself. What did and he, he understand? He never chose the subject according to uh, his priority. He looked to my interest ah. and uh, whichever I took interest, he just began to teach that. And yes. uh, from that, uh, I never felt boring yes. in, the, in the study. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. He captured. Yeah, he captured. What your yes, imagination yes, was. My, what my imagination, yeah. what is my interest, yeah. and what is my curiosity. Yes. And uh, then my curiosity are sometimes very, uh, uh, very ordinary or stupid things. <laughs> but he never discouraged. Uh -huh. He always encouraged to uh, go further to ask questions. And uh, even the silly questions he tried to yes. answer, and uh, even uh, to uh, to to make it further uh, further yes. inquiries. He respected so, your questions. Yes, yes, and he honored your curiosity. Yes, yes, yes. What, a, was, what, yes. A, what was this teacher's name? Uh, Most Venerable Nawan Jimpa. Nawan Jimpa. Nawan Jimpa. Mm. Wow, was a very formative time yes. in your life because yes. he taught you not to yes. be afraid to ask questions. Yes, yes. And yes. not to feel stupid. Right, right. See, yes. this is yes. a brilliant teacher. Yes, very brilliant teacher. Brilliant so teacher. that was my most, uh, I'm, I feel um, I'm most uh, fortunate that to get at early age yeah. such a yes. vast knowledge and a great scholar yeah. yet able to deal with the a child. A child. He so. knew the language of a child yeah. and yeah. The, the capacity of a child. Yeah. So, oh, that was a very yeah. Yeah. fortunate yeah. Yeah. event. Yeah. Uh, have you ever uh, encouraged other teachers to use those techniques? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Do I you? Do. Yeah, I do. Yes. Um, and, and I'm just curious, have you ever written about that that style of teaching the Dharma? No, I have not written mm. anything. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So uh, you you had that wonderful education and mentoring, and then uh, how was the decision made for you to move and to Drapen? This is a tradition. Mm. All um, uh, reincarnated lamas, yeah. they have to go to central Tibet. Okay. Wherever they belongs to, mm -hmm. for example, the uh, Nima tradition, they go to uh, Dorjita or uh, Mindulin okay. or the Sakya, they go to the Sakya and uh, the Kajubas, they go to the Surpu and the Gilupas, they go to uh, either of the four great monasteries, yes. Jepon, Sira, Ganden or Tashlimbu. Uh -huh. So all the higher studies, reincarnated lamas have to go through higher studies. And for the higher study, they must join the central uh, bigger monasteries, bigger monasteries. Uh, where they have, uh, uh, they have a huge people are studying and then they can debate and they yes. can 
take the whole uh, education. Yes. But unfortunately, I could not complete my education in Japan. I lived in Japan only eight years. Mm. Uh -huh. What was it like to go from such a small area where you were to, to, to go to Lhasa? What was that like for you? It was, uh, uh, today I think back, it was a great adventure uh -huh. because from my, um, um, from my native monastery to uh, Lhasa, yeah. when I uh, moved on a horseback, yeah. it took uh, 75 days. 75? 75 days. Mm. So that? the journey was uh, very interesting oh. and uh, we have about uh, 100 uh, mules oh, did you? and uh, and uh, so many um, uh, so many workers yes and uh, then uh, attendants and uh, all together i think they are about 50 people and 100 mules and uh, every day we uh, uh, take journey about uh, man minimum 15 miles maximum 21 miles and by that way yes. so going through very um, uh, very good uh, sceneries and different places and finally we reach uh, Lhasa and then I entered into the monastery yes. so this was uh, yes. yes very adventurous yes. and Adventure, also very new, very to very see new the world experience yeah this way. very new experience yeah and, and did it take 75 days uh, because it was so difficult, or because you stopped and and prayed at different places, what? Why? No, we never stopped much. Sometimes one day stopped. Uh, I think this is a, through whole journey. I think two or three times we stopped one day for a resting. Otherwise, uh, once we have to pass through a snowy mountain and snowing, and the next day everybody was a. Uh, uh, snow blind? Yes, snow blind. Really? And uh, uh. one day we have to stop. Yes. So that was a very painful experience. Yes. And otherwise, uh, as I mentioned, sometimes we move up to uh, uh, 15 miles. All the road, the miles are being marked. Yes. So 15 miles is minimum and uh, 21 miles is maximum. Ooh. So 21 miles means about a 25 kilometers, something like yes, that. Yes, yes, yeah. it would be. Mm. Um, were you, was the major, were you the major reason for this caravan, for this entourage? Yes, entourage is mostly, uh -huh. but uh, the um, establishment used to uh, trade between uh, uh, Central Tibet and uh, my native place. They used to go to Lhasa every year with those uh, mm -hmm. uh, mules and all this group. Yes, yes. But, uh, when I come to Lhasa, then it was a little uh, different. Mm -hmm. The entourage is uh, uh, more special. organized. Yeah. A little more special, <laughs> yeah, a little more right. organized. Yeah. Not yeah. so casual. Not so casual. Not so casual. Right. Not right. so casual. Um, and so when you arrived in Lhasa, can you, can you recall what your first impressions were of the Patala Palace and everything? Yes. When I reach... Uh, uh, Near Hassa, three days before we arrived to the uh, um, uh, to the uh, near uh, place of the Garden Monastery. Yes. Then uh, we heard that Chabji uh, Rinpoche, the His Holiness Junior Tutor, who recognized me, is visiting Garden Monastery. Then I went to Garden Monastery to have his uh, audience. And my first audience with him was in Garden Monastery, and uh, I was uh, <coughs> 12 years old, and we have some conversation. And uh, since then, uh, he accepted me as uh, his disciple, and I accepted him as my root teacher. Mm. And uh, that was established. And the Garden Monastery was the monastery of uh, Jisungapa, and by that way also very important. And then. Uh, after that, only three days we reach uh, Lhasa. Of course, uh, before I am coming to Lhasa, I saw the uh, photograph of uh, Putala Palace. Yes. In the Putala Palace, I have something, in, some picture in my mind. But when see it is an uh, original, that is much uh, difference from uh, yeah. the, the picture. 
Then, of course, the uh, main temple of yes. Asa Tula Khan. Yeah. So, traditionally, people uh, tell us that when you reach Lhasa, before taking tea, you must uh, have the, uh, uh, the um, pilgrimage into the yes. Tula Khan. That I did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, then thereafter, gradually, I met uh, uh, Jabji Ling Rinpoche, the senior tutor of His Holiness, mm -hmm. that was also my teacher. Uh. And then my uh, monastery teacher, Jabji Pangan Rinpoche, and uh, he came to Lhasa to receive me. I stayed Lhasa for uh, five, six days and then go to Dipo Monastery. Really? Once we entered in the monastery, then of course the monastic discipline is uh, to be followed. <laughs> right away. Yes, the right away. The party. The, yeah, the, the yeah. adventure yes, was over. Yes, yes. The adventure, yes, and now yes. it was a new adventure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and His Holiness, how often did you see him, the Dalai Lama? I reached uh, um, Lhasa the ninth ninth month of the Tibetan calendar. Then tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Three months I have not. Uh, seen the Dalai Lama. Uh -huh. Only for the uh, uh, first month of Tibetan calendar, yeah. it might be sometime in uh, February or early March mm -hmm. in the 1952, mm -hmm. then His Holiness uh, visited uh, the Molam festival in oh, yes. Lhasa. Yes. And uh, that time I saw him for the first time and also I received teaching for the first time on the 15th of the Mulam festival, mm -hmm. the full moon of the Mulam festival, he gave teaching in the morning. Uh -huh. So that was the first time I received. Uh -huh. Then thereafter in Tibet, usually three, four times in a year, we do have uh, uh, His Holiness uh, audience. Uh -huh. It's not very audience can see him or to receive his yeah. blessings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of your first impressions when you saw His Holiness? <laughs> Yes, that memory is very still, um, uh, very much um, clear. I first saw His Holiness when he is uh, passing from the first floor of the Tsula Khan and we are still low down and uh, I can have a glimpse of his uh, face and uh, his smelling and then he comes down and uh, installed into the throne. And then we hear for the first time his teaching. The most impressive was the uh, unique uh, voice. Ah. His voice is, uh, uh, no one can uh, imitate yeah. his voice. Yeah. It's very, uh, very uh, unique voice. Yes, uh, very, so, very resonant. Yes, very melodious and the words are very clear mm -hmm. and it goes direct to your heart. Yes. So he gave teaching on that morning from the Jataka <coughs> stories, and uh, there is a first Jataka story, Jabu Chambeto, I still remember. He uh, gave a uh, narration from the Jabu Chambeto's um, Jatak, and uh, he gave quite uh, extensive explanation, and that was the first teaching. And then, uh, since then, I do attend almost all his teachings mm -hmm. in. Uh, uh, Asa or Nublinka yes, or yes, Putala. Yes. You were, you were uh, close in age to His Holiness. Uh, he is a four years well, I know. senior. Only four yes, years senior. Four years senior to me. So, in that sense, that must have been also a very interesting to see someone four right. years older. Yes, yes, yes. With such charisma. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I think so. Um, um, Rinpoche Lao, what happens? What happens to you next in the uh, in the in your studies? What happens in the ninth month uh, when I entered into uh, monastery? Then, of course, uh, uh, we begin our uh, study. Mm -hmm. The uh, subject to be begin the first subject is logic. Uh -huh. Buddhist logic yeah. is considered to be yes. key to other studies mm -hmm. unless 
you understand the logic, you will not be able to uh, uh, analyze the things in the other subjects. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, thereafter, uh, uh, I got a teacher in, in the Debo Monastery and um, then I studied and I was uh, I was not bad student because I have good background to my native monastery and my teacher has taught mm -hmm. many things so I, I can I can cope with my st studies quite, uh, uh, quite easily. yes quite easily mm -hmm. so yeah. I don't uh, remember anything which I find difficult. Of course, I was not able to complete <coughs> to s complete the study in the monastery. It will take at least 20 years. Yes, I know. So I, know. I was only able to stay there eight years. Eight years. Yeah. I know that. So it is not even half. Right. So then after coming to Excel, I, my teacher uh, persuaded me to uh, continue my study. But that study is very shabby, yeah. and uh, we cannot study like. So of course, I completed all the uh, all the texts and all the subjects which require for a gishi. But uh, the later part of my study is uh, not very thorough. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you were when you first arrived there, as you said, uh, you didn't get to complete it. Were there any? Um, experiences of the Chinese uh, just that you knew from inside the monastery? What was your understanding of what was happening <laughs> outside? <laughs> when I arri arrived to Lhasa, mm. the first and foremost uh, visible sign of occupation is uh, a radio program. A radio program is called <coughs> Tunjil Hase means the city of Lhasa and Kuyu uh, Jandal means uh, with, uh, with a tar, with a, um, uh, with a wire mm -hmm. and then um, um, on that wire the uh, uh, what you call the microphones have been mm -hmm. uh, um, Placed on the house tops. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And uh, three Speak. hours a day, the noise pollution used to be there, and uh, always talking all the time. How the Tibet have been peacefully liberated yes. through 17-point agreement, and uh, who were the people who signed the 17-point agreement, and uh, hearing to that, uh, we uh, remember everybody's name. And uh, they always used to say, Wang Cha Cha San Yu Beng Apu Nga Onji Me. That means, uh, having all authority, mm -hmm. Mr. Nga Apu Nga Onji Me. Yes. <coughs> because people used to say, the, the agreement was uh, concluded under duress, and Nga Apu was not authorized to uh, enter into such agreement, and there's no authority. So therefore, they always repeat this, repeat, repeat, the Ngāpū Ngāon Jime has all authority and with all his authority and he has signed this and each day they repeat what are the 17 points and how important is coming back the Tibet to the uh, main house of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, big family yes. and so on and so forth. So this is uh, visible one thing and the second visible is uh, all the places near the monasteries and uh, government establishments, they have put the uh, military uh, camp. camp yeah. And right uh, in front of Depo Monastery, um, we call it Jangta Linka. That means uh, right from the Depo Monastery, we can see there are thousands of tents have been uh, put, and later on it become barracks. Yes. So this military presence was very uh, visible. Apart from these two, mm. uh, we never care what is going on at the political level. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any news and uh, what channels are doing at yes. the level of government or what. Mm -hmm. So we are quite usually uh, living in a monastery. Mm -hmm. So 
But the speakers, the loudspeakers, morning and night? Yes, for oh. yes. Three hours in the morning and three hours in the evening. It was really... Uh, Imposing. Yes. How, could, how yeah. could you study and meditate with that <laughs> yes, noise? No, yes, very difficult. And the, on the top of the noise, and in try to uh, make it uh, audible to everyone, yes. so it is very, very loud. Uh, very, very loud. Oh. And um, then uh, at many places, I think uh, five, six houses in between, then they will, you will find one. Uh, loudspeaker. <laughs> did, did the monastery officials, do you know if they ever complained to the Chinese and said that the noise is bothering our monastic life? No, monasteries are far away from the Lhasa city uh -huh. and it is only for the city people. I don't know whether they complained or not. Oh, I see. But when we go to the Lhasa, we have to go Lhasa twice in a uh -huh. year. One is the Mulam festival and the other is the Sochi festival. Uh -huh. Uh, I never joined Sochi festival and the Malam festival is a compulsory for everyone and at that time we feel uh, very uncomfortable. Yes, very. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Was there, um, when you said there was no news inside the monastery, was that because there wasn't an interest in it or just because they, uh, there was no way to get news? I think that is uh, the cultural, the system, uh -huh. the monks never bothered what is happening in the political mm -hmm. or uh, yeah. social level. Yes. They are just uh, content with their studies in the monastery mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. what is going on in the world, they have no concern. Yeah. <laughs> they had other other interest. Other interest higher... and they are, they are living in a different world. Yes, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then did when did things begin to really change for you uh, because of the Chinese presence? What, what started to happen that uh, created more havoc? Um, increase of population, Chinese population. Yeah, yeah. Increase of Chinese population means 80% military personnel, just 20% civil uh, workers or some other uh, Chinese yeah. businessmen yeah. also, there are very few. And uh, due to that increase, for the common people, one visible um, problem is uh, inflation, the increase of cost, cost yeah. all commodity, mm, yeah. the butter or the tea or yeah. whatever the uh, yeah. <coughs> daily usage of people, right. they become very costly and which which uh, makes people, uh, uh, <coughs> which makes the Chinese persons more unpopular. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, apart from that, uh, this Tibet government is functioning as usual. There's mm -hmm. not much uh, disturbance. Mm -hmm. Of course, only that <coughs> two uh, uh, regents, Lokhan and the Losan. Tashi, these two have to remove due to uh, Chinese pressure. Yes. This was one visible. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, the things are going, monasteries or the government's business are going quite functioning. usually, functioning Thanks. quite usually. Okay. Yes, I see. And when it was 1954, 55, yeah. His Holiness had to go to Beijing right. to attend the uh, National Congress. Mm -hmm. And when His Holiness left Tibet, people felt very uh, unhappy, Unsettling. yes, unhappy. there are so many um, doubts yes. when he will come back, right. how he will come back, uh -huh. and the roads are not good, right. and it's a very long journey, yes. yeah. so that was, uh, that little bit shocked the Tibetan people, yeah. but then next year he come back, and the people become again normal, then in uh, 56, he went to India, and at that time, people did not felt much uh, uneasiness. Right. So, the real uh, uneasiness feeling was uh, sometime in uh, 1957 and 58. Uh -huh. 
because uh, 56, 57, the uprising in the Qam mm -hmm. become uh, more visible and they are uh, yeah. armed resistance. Yeah. And uh, then 1958, in center also, yeah. uh, the uh, Chushi Ganduk right. uh, armed resistance was Fighters. established mm -hmm. in the south of Tibet. Right. And uh, we hear sometimes the news a little bit about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And that then people seems to be quite intense. But till the uh, 10th March of 1959, in spite of little tense and uh, the His Holiness security arrangements are much uh, upgraded. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there's not much, uh, uh, Concern. not much unusual mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. concerns were there. But things are moving usually. Mm -hmm. uh, just before the 10th March, uh, Mulam Festival was concluded, right. and that Mulam Festival was His Holiness was giving the. Gishil Haramba examination, mm -hmm. and uh, which was a very, very important and unique, uh, yes. uh, unique uh, event. Yes. And uh, everything went very smoothly. Mm -hmm. We only say, can, can visualize that uh, armed Chinese military personnel, uh, truck loads are moving around. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know where they are going to, but sometimes going, sometimes coming. This is not very uh, soothing to your eyes. Uh, apart from that, there's not much difference. <laughs> the things are going usually. Uh -huh. And the Milam Festival was completed, and His Holiness went back to uh, Novolinka, and uh, everything was smooth. Mm -hmm. And the 10th March morning, then we heard that His Holiness had been invited to the Chinese military camp, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, uh, instructed that not to carry his uh, personal security people mm -hmm. there. And then uprising of the uh, civilians in Hassa mm -hmm. to request His Holiness not to go mm -hmm. to the uh, mm -hmm. Chinese military camp. And uh, if His Holiness might go there, then he might be taken away. Exactly. So this, this was the, mm -hmm. uh, some information mm -hmm. or uh, mm -hmm. imprehension both. And you might have you might have read in the yes. His Holiness books and many other accounts are there. Yes. So that morning, the completely the things are changed mm -hmm. completely. And then 10th March to 21st March, the 11 days were of course very very tense. Yes. Uh, so much tense. Then China is also very visibly moving the weaponries and um, artillery. Yes, arteries, and then they are preparing for the uh, bombardment. And then it was uh, midnight of uh, 20 and 21st. I was uh, just uh, went in bed, and uh, I think a few minutes I, I slept, and I heard this bombardment. <sighs> Some of my other friends are not yet uh, uh, go to sleep. So, then the whole day of 21st was uh, bombardment and uh, Novolinka was destroyed, Putala was damaged partially, Sira Monastery was uh, yeah. damaged quite uh, extensively, Jepu Monastery, my monastery, only two um, bomb shells were uh, explos <laughs> exploded near the monastery, but the monastery was not damaged. Mm. So that day we escaped. Mm -hmm. you, that very day? Yes, that very day. Yeah. How did you do that? <coughs> Seeing the damage of Nubulinka, Putala, and Sira monastery, uh, a, a sense of insecurity living in the monastery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have uh, the um, authentic information that His Holiness is uh, not in the Nobulinka and he has already left to the south. Uh -huh. So with this two, um, one, the fear of bombardment and secondly, His Holiness uh, is no more there and yeah. we should go 
on that direction and don't know where to go and how to go. But uh, I think it is uh, uh, just spontaneous and then people look in each other. Uh, there are m many monks are going in one direction and yes. the other monks are also joined by this way. Of course, there are many monks who refuse to go out. Yes. They remained in the... But uh, I think uh, almost 60% of the monks have uh, Wait. escaped yes. on that who day. Who did you travel with? Uh, first, uh, I requested to my teacher, uh, who is very old, ask him to uh, leave the monastery and uh, I told him I'm going and you should also go. And uh, we only say that we should go to the south, yeah. south of Tibet, where the Kampa resistance group were there. There's no Chinese military right. presence. And also His Holiness went to that side. So this much we know. Then I joined my other teacher, who is younger than the older teacher, and we come together. And one night we stayed in the uh, caps of the backside of the monastery. Right. And the next morning we saw all the monks are going the, uh, the, the ups, upside and go the, behind the mountain. So we all joined together. You that. joined them? Yes. Uh, what kind of provisions did you carry? What kind of? Did you carry any food, any clothing with you? No, not much clothing. We carry the sufficient zampa uh -huh. uh, and then some tea or some butter, so which may be sufficient for three, four days. And uh, we cannot carry much, uh, right. uh, much weight yes. because we have to move. Mm. Had to move. Were you moving on foot or on horses? On foot, you were on moving foot. on foot. Wow. We are moving on foot for about uh, two days, mm -hmm. and then we reached the uh, <coughs> border of the south, mm -hmm. where the Kampa resistance were in occupation. Mm -hmm. Then I got a horse, mm -hmm. and uh, we are two people, and uh, I did not uh, um, Mount on the horse, but the horse is for our luggage. Yes. So we become very easy. Yes. To uh, yes, to, to move. To and walk. The, the horse carries mm -hmm. two, two persons mm -hmm. whole of luggage, and both of us free to uh, move. What was in your heart as you made that journey away from your monastery and Lhasa? In the first two, three days, there's not much... Uh, emotions, feelings, it was a kind of... Uh, shock? A kind of shock, uh, not knowing what to do and mm. not knowing where to go, yeah. but not to stay in the monastery yeah. and looking at each other, many people going to one direction and we followed to them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after a few days, then we have a heavy heart because of the, uh, uh, because of the uh, disintegration of the monasteries, which are the centers of the Buddha Dharma, right, right. and uh, which is very difficult to uh, re-establish. Right. One hand, and the other hand, we have the uh, news that His Holiness and his two tutors, all of three are safe, and they are able to uh, go much beyond the uh, oh, yeah. Chinese military's reach. Yeah. So this was a kind of uh, confidence, and then we follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. a relief. Yes, a relief. A relief, yes, in yeah. spite of yes. the sadness. Yes, yes. Too. Were you Were you worried that the uh, the monasteries were going to be uh, bombed, destroyed by artillery fire, and all the all the manuscripts and everything be destroyed? Yes, that yeah. that fear was there. Yeah. That fear yeah. was very yeah. much there. Yeah. What What about? Uh, I know you had to travel lightly, but was there any way you attempted to bring out any particular? Uh, Manuscripts or document or no, nothing. No, no. You had to leave it all. No, yes. Ah. I only carry a very small book of uh, 
two root tests which is called abhisamaya alankar and uh, madhyamika avatar which are very important that was handy and it can be put in a uh, in the pocket so from tibet originally i carry only that you nothing carry else only that. and your heart <laughs> <laughs> of course yes and your love right, of yeah. the dharma yeah, you yeah, got to carry yes, that with yes, you yes. and and uh, as you said you had to then begin again how long did that journey take before you reached safety we uh, continuously traveled day and night for about uh, the 22nd whole day 22nd whole night and uh, 23rd a break and the uh, 24th whole day and uh, night and we reached to the uh, ludak that is uh, under the uh, uh, kampa chujgandru uh, resistance moments uh, control i see and uh, we feel safe there uh -huh. and there we stayed for about uh, a week uh -huh. and then again we have to run in the night wow because uh, we heard that chinese military is approaching okay and then uh, at from there one night was uh, quite difficult it was snowing and we lost the way and the whole night we journeyed uh, we traveled and in the morning we reached to uh, suna suna is the almost the border mm -hmm. and then one day we rested and the, that night we again come and the whole night and then we cross the pass and the next morning i think it is sometime uh, end of march i do not remember the exact something date something like that and then we reached the indian border oh. <laughs> i i I can only imagine how painful it was to leave but what kind of prayers were in your heart what what can you remember what you were hoping and praying for there are few concerns in our mind mm. the first and foremost concern is uh, safety of his holiness and his mm. two tutors yeah. all of three were uh, root teachers to all of us yes so that is our first concern and second concern is uh, the buddhist tradition the buddha dharma yes. which is uh, been very much um, living tradition in the monasteries and when the monasteries are abruptly um, disturbed their tradition is going to be uh, very much damaged yes and that's why as soon as we reach to a uh, india in the refugee camps the first thing the monks did was try to continue their studies and uh, then uh, uh, continue the uh, monastic rituals yes. which are necessary yes. to remain as a monastery yes, yes. so in the summary I very much remember we uh, have the uh, uh, fortnightly uh, rituals of the monastic, and uh, we continue to study, uh -huh. try to study, and debate. So, I think for the monks. I don't know for the lay people for the monks and particularly for the monks who are studying in the monasteries mm -hmm. their great concern was how to keep the study alive yes I think guess Rinpoche la you have helped keep history alive today thank you with your story thank you and for and and for sharing how how essential and important the dharma was right because that was the heart of right. what yes. you brought from yes. tibet okay. right. and yes. and i hope that you feel that that the new beginning that the monks have had yeah. that we have not lost too yes. much 
Now you can see how much is revived here. Do you feel? This is evident. Yes. Yeah, this, Do you feel I, satisfied I, yes. with the revival? Yes. 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 Oh, God. I so. need not explain that. You can see for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I do see. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank we you. have one. Um, so we're, we're very honored to uh, record your story and thank you for your participation. Most welcome. Yes, May we ask for one minute to take one picture for the project? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. thank you. That would be very nice. Stay okay. You can stay.